Hi everyone, welcome back. I told you last week I had an interesting project. Um, I've got the, actually, you know, the 250 over there. I've changed the caliper and I've changed the actual lever itself now and the master cylinder and it still didn't work. So I've actually got a new hose for that. So I'm really hoping that gets its rear brake today. But this is priority today. Let's have a look. <coughs> This is our priority today. This is a Bandit 400cc. Um, it's an interesting bike, look how small it is compared to the 6. And this is the one that has two spark plugs snapped into the cylinder. Now, it is such a pain. In fact, give me a minute, I'm going to pull it out and we'll discuss it. Okay, so back to this bike. The guy bought it, the guy bought it from a shop. Now, overall the bike is very clean. It's very clean. But he paid close to 1500. And, I mean I would have gone, I would have gone 600, I mean my 600cc, you can have for 900 or 850. Um, so I would have gone 600 all day long. Now the biggest problem for me is the shop has done one of two things okay this bike was meant to come with a full service okay so now however many months later six months later um, the owner has tried to remove the spark plugs and they've snapped so there's one of two things going on here the shop have bad mechanics absolutely over torqued or worse cross threaded the heading that's one thing that could have happened or secondly they lied and they didn't remove the spark the original spark plugs and they didn't change them um, either way my advice to the guy I'd be going back to the shop because I'm gonna try and help with this today but I don't think it's something we can achieve here so I would be dropping this back off to the shop and saying Actually, for 1500 quid, this needs to be mint, and the fact that two spark plugs snapped means something else is wrong. But that's kind of, that's the negatives. There's many positives to this bike. It's very clean. It all looks kind of new, neat, and clean. The wheels look great. So maybe the shop did do some sort of restoration on it, or at least did the last owner did. All this is kind of very neat and new. It's kind of the stuff I do, buy turds and polish them up. <laughs> but yeah. Now here's the problem, we can't see it, but it's down there obviously, and it's a spark plug. Now there's, there's kind of two ways a spark plug can snap. The middle can spin out, leaving just the threads in. So imagine you look down, you see a massive hole, you can see the piston, but you can't, you can't actually screw a new one in because the threads are still in there. That's a fairly straightforward method of extraction you just get the tools that I'll show you later down into it and generally they can pull it out that's that's not the end of the world and the second way it can snap is it can literally snap clean off leaving no hole at all which is how this is so this is a flat flush surface nothing to grip or grab and it has a no hole at all so that's the dilemma on here you generally shouldn't drill in, although in my experience you can drill in to the middle gently and you can try and extract. Um, and actually, you can drill to an extent as much as you want. Because ultimately if you need to take the engine out, which you do, then um, you have to do that anyway and you can clean it all out. If you need to re-tap and, and thread the hole, you can do that as well or you can get someone to do that. I'd never do that myself. I'm not good enough at that. So that's where we're going with this bike. Um, I was just looking at the oil. The oil is either non-existent or way too full. Let's uh, let's tilt the bike and see what's going on there. There's too much oil in there. You should never go above the full. Too much oil is as bad as too little. It goes up into the 
cylinders here and it squirts out and it comes out the exhaust and it can ruin everything so I'm I'll ask the guy but I'll probably drain a touch just to bring it down to the full line if we get everything else sorted okay so let's just get back to the basics we need to take the seats off seat seats one or two two and uh, I'll remove the tank I'm hoping it has a stopper on it so that we can just switch the petrol off remove the tank and then look down the bores and see what we're working with that's the next step okay so the seats off as you can see that's just with the key one screw holding on both of these side panels this side and the other side and they just pop off that will just stop them snapping look someone's done that in the past um, so that will just stop them snapping and then this should be held on with a popper there you go that's it and it pops straight off do that on both sides oh let me get that screw there you go great and the same on this side that just helps you lift the tank off without any issues so the tank's loose now guys it's just here like this thing on the side all we need to do now is, is have a reference to where the hoses go so I now know that the braided hose is on the left and the plain hose is on the right and actually the suction hose there isn't connected anyway so this bike shouldn't have been running too well anyway uh, but it was running so that's fine so yeah I'm just going to pull them hoses off try not to split them and remove the tank there's no off switch for this tank which is a pain so I'll just have to sit it on its side or something or you know without it dripping so that's all I'm going to do now okay guys so this is going to be hard to see maybe I was wrong thinking it was flush there looks like there's a hole in there but the hole isn't very deep this means one of the grippers could work I haven't seen this side actually god there's so much going on is there a hole in there one of the grippers could work other problem is look how far down it is look at the size of this how far down it is so that's it there so it's as far as this I don't know if my grippers are that long so I don't know if we're in a better off position now or a worse position um, what I'm going to do is, is take off the coils and get them out the way both sides and try and move everything or just try it kind of into the middle and get it all a bit more a bit better I'm going to dump a bit more WD down there. I know the guys have been dumping WD down for days, so that's great. Um, I'm going to dump a bit more down there. And then go and start looking at the extractor tools I've got and seeing if if we have any chance. So I've, I've sprayed some WD-40 down there. Now, for reference, because I'm going to be popping these wires, I want them on camera so I can see exactly where they go back. So you see the oranges up there and the whites down there. And on this side, it's actually the opposite. The orange is at the bottom and the black's on the top. This means I can go back to my own video, like I do a lot, actually, and know exactly where the wiring situation, what it should be. Okay, so we've got kind of this much room now. There's the problem. It's very deep. If, for any reason, we can't get it out at the top, we have to remove the cam cover and then start looking at what we can do further down. Now removing the cam cover is gonna be a bit of a pain because it's a very tight bike, everything's really close. And it's gonna mean really stripping it back actually. So ideally, I don't wanna go there, but we might have to in the end. First thing I need to try at this stage is finding my tools, seeing if they even go that deep and then considering what we do with them okay guys so i've got a new stand cheapest on ebay should work great let's see what we've got in our toolbox for what we're doing today these should be the key players they should screw down it should be this one actually it should screw down in it should grip it's a reverse thread hang on a minute yes reverse thread so we turn it that way. Should grip enough to pop it out. I mean that. I mean we're asking a hell of a lot for something that's seized with a proper ratchet on it. 
So we're asking this to do a lot. We're really hoping that the WD has worked its way through and sorted that out. I'm not using any heat on this engine, no point, petrol around. I'm not going there. Uh, so we're just hoping this fits. Now I believe this square end here should fit into a 10 mil. It should be snug enough to sort it all out and hope it works. The next size down is probably too skinny. That's probably too skinny. That needed a bit more. It needed to get fatter at the end, really. Uh, and what we don't want is this falling into the cylinder, and we're really screwed. Um, drill bits are because actually, if, if it was flush like it looked originally, you'd have to drill a little hole. These ones are generally no good. I've bought these because I, I've used them a few times and they worked, but not on spark plugs. Therefore, screws and stuff like that. Um, and these um, valves and valve remover, core remover is for the moped. So, actually, I thought I had much more in my toolbox, but this seems like it's going to be the key player. And, um, yeah. And actually, the guys had this method in mind, so let's see if they're right. Let's get this in. Let's crank it by hand. Let's see if we get lucky. So at this stage, guys, exactly what we thought was going to happen. That one's too fat. This one appears to be too thin. Except I've been a bit nervous about dropping it in. It might grip here at the top. So I'm going to try and put this on a ratchet. I just really don't want to drop this in and lose it, you know. But um, I'm going to try and put this on a ratchet and we'll see if it grips at the top here because it gets a bit fatter. I'll have a little look at that. And actually, I don't even know if the hole is that deep, but we'll give it a shot. Okay, so I've hammered on this 932, whatever that is. I've never used it before. That way it should stay attached to my ratchet. Uh, so this could be the winner, but I, this should get fatter. That's what's really annoying about this. It should get quite a bit fatter at the top. It does a little bit. You never know it could work. I'm gonna give that a shot. Okay guys, I'm really sorry about this few, but um, I'm working. Oh my God. Oh my God, come on, come on. Oh, guys, no. <laughs> yes! Oh, my God, guys, look. I am speechless. Absolutely speechless. Oh, my God, I can't believe that worked. That was actually Tesh's idea there. So, uh, Tesh, all credit to you, mate. You got that spot on. Yes. Can't believe it, guys. Half an hour's work, and we've done a really difficult removal. Let's hope the same thing works on the other side. So I'm just removing the coil on this other side. This side's very busy, so it's quite hard to get in there. What you wouldn't want is this uh, screw falling down into the hole. So you'd be uh, pretty screwed then. Ah, oh, come on. What a pain. more with that. I'm going to try, I'm going to try and go down through there. Oh. I don't know, I don't want to ruin my chance of getting it correct actually. That's got to come off, it's right in the way.
Time on some bikes, the actual mechanical bits that you're working on aren't, aren't a huge issue, it's the all the bits around it, all the old nuts and bolts, they're seized, that's why I get the WD-40, any bike I get WD-40 everywhere you can just to loosen everything up for the future, you know, just for when you when you actually do need it. Good thing about that removal over that side though is that nothing is in the cylinder because it's all out there. Um, so that's great. All we have to do is put in the new spark plug, which we're not going to see today actually guys. We're going to see that tomorrow because the spark plugs aren't here. The other things we should be looking at are the middle two spark plugs weren't even attempted to be removed. I'm going to spray WD down there. And let it soak we're not going to remove them they're working so it's fine but when the next person is ready for this bike and ready to service it the WD that I spray down will work its way through and that will help them out they should not get the same issue again ah come on taking forever Just enough room. Let's see. Yep, should be fine there. So keep it all neat. Let's see. I'm nervous about this one. By getting the first one right, it kind of there's a bit more pressure on this one. It's a bit weird, but it's, it's true. Um, can't feel any grip you can't feel what's happening here guys it's not obvious whether it's working or not and you can't can you see guys I think no guys I think we're winning hang on There it is, causing all the problems. Great, my God, I had this big long day planned out. I invited Jake Corb down, you know the guy I talk about a lot, he gives me all my parts, he gives me lots of advice um, to help me out with this one. But, uh, you know, there's not much more I can do today on this actually, because I need the new spark plugs. Obviously I'll throw back, you know, the coil back on. But, uh, yeah. Sorted. I'm uh, I'm shocked actually. I've I've read lots about these problems. Um, although honest, you know, is it is it skill? Is it mechanical? I think I think to an extent, I got a bit lucky, but that was the tool. It worked. We were lucky. There was a hole in there. When I looked uh, last week, it looked flush, and I thought I had to drill the hole, which still kind of would have worked, but stuff would have been in the um, in the cylinder then. But yeah, so a video that was meant to last all day is over, really. Shame, a bit of an anti-climax. I'm actually looking forward though, I want to um, fire this up. Um, he's coming back tomorrow and um, I'd like to give it a spin, you know me, I like to drive every bike I've got. Uh, I'm not sure I've driven a 400 Bandit. I've always avoided them because... 
they're not particularly good bikes. They're you know they're a bit they're very slow compared to the six, and the six is quite tame anyway. Um, and you can't get parts for them. And also the um, GSXR 400, which to which this engine is from, I believe, is a, it's just a much better bike, and the engine's tuned a bit more. Uh, correct me, I might be wrong there, but I've had a 400 GSXR and so on. So yeah, that's it for that video today. I've got a rear brake to look at over there and these tires are driving me nuts. Ah, oh, let's look at our... No, let's do another video on that. So, uh, in hindsight, that... I'm not going to change that wire because the brake has some pressure now. I, I basically tied it down or clipped it down and it has some pressure so the back brake on that is not too bad I think I was sold a Duff caliper I've left negative feedback for that um, I think that needs new tyres no the rear tyre is fine it needs a new front tyre uh, it doesn't put air doesn't go in and stay in basically so it's hard to get air in and it doesn't stay in so definitely speedo cable I don't really know where to go with it uh, we could try a new cable but I've got a feeling the actual clock is where the problem is so I, I might nip it off and have a quick look but it's more effort than it's worth really uh, for the speedo at the moment the tyres are okay there's a bit of air in the front and the engine starts and the exhaust isn't loud anymore and the front brake works that's the kind of majority so that's that's okay and the, the Bandit 400 um, the guys are coming back tomorrow to for us to fit the new spark plugs, fire it up, and then it becomes the bike it was before anyway. Uh, I wish we could have fired this up today. Uh, I would have really liked that, but I haven't got the spark plugs. Um, I haven't got spare ones, so no point. I could always go and get them, but there's no point. They're coming tomorrow. I don't know what happened there. That wasn't me. That was there. Um, yeah. So that's it for today. I thought I was going to be busy all day today. Um, I was going to get the MOT done on the Thunder Race, wasn't I? But um, I'm going to do that next week. I still haven't got a logbook. Logbook's due this week or next. So I'll do that next Saturday, actually. That'll be interesting. It should pass, to be fair. Everything basic works on it. So, yeah, that's it. My old trusty bandit. Still going strong. So that's all good. And tomorrow, yeah, we'll just finish it off tomorrow. We'll just finish this. Throw it back together, get all the wires put back in, get the new plugs put in, bolt it all back up, fire it up, and we're ready to go. Remember, I need to drop a little bit of oil. I'll ask the guy, though, he might not want that. Um, he might, you know, for whatever reason. But that is kind of the right thing to do because it's, it's too high. So, uh, yeah, great. Well, uh, sorry it wasn't as interesting as it should have been. But that's kind of how it works with these things. Uh, if anyone needs any help, I'm helping these guys out with this bike. Um, if anyone needs any help with their bike, you can always get it to me in London. And you can spend the day with me working on it. Or leave it with me and I'll, I'll do the best I can on it. And hopefully I'll help you out. I, uh, I sorted these guys out today. That could have been a right pain and I think a mechanic would have really charged for that. Um, they would have taken the mic, I believe, and said the engine had to come out and stuff. Whereas we showed you on camera it didn't. So yeah, um, I always love getting questions, I always like chatting to people, I always love projects. So please subscribe, please share, please send me your comments and you know I like to meet everyone. And thanks for watching.